Back when I was applying to college, you know, long before any of you were born, my parents constantly worried that I'd missed deadlines or other milestones in my application journey. Had I visited enough schools? Had I applied for a financial aid and scholarship? Did I still have essays to write? Of course, I wasn't too concerned, but it turned out that my parents were right to worry. In late November that year, I realized that I had accidentally missed the early application deadline at one of my favorite schools. And that definitely wasn't the only thing I messed up. Hi, I'm Elias, and welcome back to College Vine. In this two-part series, we'll be going over everything you need to do for college admissions, from the start of your junior fall to the moment you hit submit on your final application. If you're worried about managing the seemingly endless list of applications and admissions-related tasks, this video is for you. We'll help you plan out your application journey so that you can easily stay on top of everything and avoid the kinds of mistakes that I made. Let's start at the beginning, junior fall. This is when you'll want to take a step back and look at the trajectory of your high school courses and extracurriculars. Try to identify an academic or extracurricular area in which you're competitive or in which you've already dedicated significant time and energy. This field could become the basis for your spike. And if you're not familiar with that term, don't worry. We have a whole video on spikes, which you can check out here, maybe. But in short, a spike is a very impressive part of your resume, centered around a specific subject or activity that sticks out, you know, like a spike. These are pretty critical in the admissions process, especially at elite schools. And that's it for junior fall, quick, I know. Once winter comes and the snow starts falling, if that's still a thing where you live, things will start picking up a bit. In your junior winter, you'll have two main things to think about in addition to global warming. Haha, uh, climate change jokes, yikes. Your personal statement and registering for standardized tests. Those are the two things. Your personal statement is the essay that you'll send to just about every college. You'll most likely be using the prompts on the Common App, and because these are released in January or February, you have a good while to start thinking about what you'll write for this main essay. As for standardized tests, you'll also want to register for the spring ACT and SAT, which you'll have to do before the end of the winter. And then you'll spring into junior spring. You'll probably have a flood of AP exams in May and maybe have another go at the SAT or ACT in June if you weren't satisfied with your previous score. Of course, you could also take standardized tests in May, but be careful. If they're offered the same week as your AP exams, you may be more burnt out than you think when the testing dates roll around. That's another mistake I made. I nearly fell asleep during my May SAT after a week of strenuous AP exams. I was definitely not happy with my score that time around. At the end of junior year, you'll want to lock down your recommendation letters from your favorite teachers. We've linked some more info on this below, but I'll quickly outline the process. First, you'll need to craft a resume or a brag sheet. This is to help your recommenders They'll probably want to draw material from a list of your accomplishments as they write your letter. That's your brag sheet. Then you'll need to strategically pick a couple teachers to ask. We'd recommend asking at least one teacher from the subject area in which you're planning to major, while the others or others should be able to speak to different but complementary aspects of your personality. That said, you should always prioritize asking the teachers who appreciate you the most. And these teachers will appreciate you even more if you ask them well ahead of time. And now, summer. The most important thing you can do during this sacred season is to take a little time for yourself. Senior fall is gonna be stressful. If there's one college-related thing to do though, it's to put some work into building a school list. Our advice is to shoot for eight to 12 schools, including at least two safeties and a mix of targets and reaches. Our free chancing engine at collegevine.com should be immensely helpful in this process. You just fill out your profile and we'll tell you your chances of acceptance at over 1,500 colleges and universities. Having a balanced school list early on will help you streamline the rest of your application endeavors. You can plan out all of those supplemental essays well ahead of time and spread the work out over months instead of just the couple weeks before the deadlines. Your list doesn't have to be totally set in stone by the end of the summer, but you'll want something that's workable. Of course, we'd also recommend drafting your personal statement, you know, that big essay with the prompts we recommended you look at back in February. By August, you should aim to have a finished draft, and after that, you'll probably want to start in on your supplemental essays as well. You can also use this time to take the SAT or ACT again if you're still not satisfied with your score. And last, you'll want to keep developing your extracurricular list and sharpening your spike during the summer. This might sound like a lot on top of building a school list and writing your personal statement, 
but it's probably something you're already doing. Your internship, your lifeguard job, even your SoundCloud output, they could all provide great material for your resume and your essays as well. And that wraps up the summer. This has already been a long video, so we've decided to cut part one here. If you're curious about what you'll need to keep in mind during senior year, well, then just stay tuned for part two. We'll be releasing that soon. We covered a lot of ground in this video. We were talking about standardized testing, essay writing, school list building, recommendation letters, extracurricular activities, and more. We've linked some of our blog posts on each of these topics in the description so that you can delve deeper if reading is more your style. You can also visit collegevine.com to view all of our other free resources, such as our community help forums, our frequent live streams, our custom chancing engine, and even a college scholarship we have available to students who make a free account on the site. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you all again next time.